Yes, let's give the Lord one more hand. He makes a way. He makes a way where there seems that there's not a way. And there's an old saying that we, when we come to the end of our rope and you're done, that's where God shows up. And he makes a way and he gets all the glory. There's some breakthroughs that don't happen in your time. They happen in God's time. And then he gets ultimate glory. You might want it a little faster. And you want the results now. But God's more concerned in who you're becoming than your results. The difficulties, the trials, the pushback develop you. They build your character. They make you stronger. And that's why the Bible says, count a joy when you fall into, when, not if, when you fall into, I just fell into something, trials and tribulations. That means make sure that you have the right attitude about what you're going through. Because if you don't get the right attitude about what you're going through, you're going to stay in it a little longer. God's more concerned about your faith, your character, than he is about your situation. Count of joy when you fall into, fall into it, trials and tribulations, knowing you got to know something. That the testing of your faith will produce. The trial is going to produce something in you. It's going to produce some endurance. Someone say endurance. That means it's going to get you to the point that you can handle some pressure. Handle some pressure without blowing up. Handle some pressure without blowing up on people. Handle some pressure without massively being in anxiety and depressed. Handle some pressure and say, I know God is going to get me through this. This I'm going to endure through because God's with me. And though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear nothing because there's a factor in this thing. The Lord is with me and he's going to get me through this. Is there anybody that understands that when God's with you, you can get through it. It's going to be all right. Your trial is just a test. That's all it is. Learn how to overcome it and graduate. Amen. Come on. Learn how to overcome it and graduate. Stop expecting for everybody to be perfect so you could be happy. Learn how to be happy when everything's imperfect. That's when you're being perfected. Come on, give God a little bit of praise because he's perfecting you. He's maturing you. You're going to get through it. We're, we're going to study a little bit tonight about a subject. And this is a subject, love. And I wrote a book and it talks about eight principles for guaranteed growth. And love is a foundational principle for growth in your life. You really know that you're maturing by the level of love you walk in. Love, love never fails. That means anger is going to fail you. Impatience is going to fail you. Manipulation is going to fail you. Your pride will fail you. But love will never fail you. Your education might fail you. Your money might fail you. People might fail you, but love never fails. It's time for us to observe where we're really at. Am I really becoming more loving? Because if you're becoming more loving, not more impatient, not more anxious, not more crazy, not more addicted, not more promiscuous, but more loving, you're growing. And you know who you're becoming more like? Jesus. You're becoming more like God. For God is love. So today we're going to be talking about a principle, love equals, love equals guaranteed growth. If you want to grow, in your life, in ministry, in your relationships, even in your money, 
if you want to see grow in your business it's important that you have the right atmosphere for growth and the atmosphere for growth is love when there's love it's like sunshine things grow you don't have a marriage problem you got a love problem and some of us because we're not walking in love it's messing with our money because you're offending people and you're getting offended and there's no favor God says I want to graduate you but you can't even handle their persecution their anger their attitude I'm telling you to love those people I'm ready to graduate you you think it's about them I'm th I, I, it's about you I want to make sure that you grow in my image so I could use you to bridge people to me let's give God some praise come on we're gonna learn about love tonight father we just thank you for tonight you're a loving God and you've called us to be loving people not prideful people not religious people but loving people may we be more like you make your love real to us tonight that we would know the love of Christ tonight and those that are hurting, that feel lonely and broken tonight, maybe there's someone here tonight saying, man, I don't even know what this is all about, that they would understand what it's all about is that you love us. It's all about love. May we get that, may we understand it, and may we grow tonight in love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I'm going to make some statements tonight as we study you could take some notes and the first statement I'm going to make is love and growth go hand in hand it's a guarantee say it with me love and growth go hand in hand it's a guarantee the word guarantee means this a promise or assurance of a particular outcome it's definite it's for sure it's absolute I love, I love when something is absolute. I could depend on it. It's a for sure thing. Have you ever said that? This is a for sure thing. There are things in your life that you think are for sure things and they're not. Pastor Robert, he talked to me last week about the Canelo fight. And people thought that was a for sure thing. Canelo's going to win that fight and he's going to light heavyweight guaranteed and he said that his barber put ten thousand dollars on Canelo and Robert's telling him in sports there's no for sure thing pastor Robert's getting his hair cut and telling him please don't do it and he told Robert you don't know what you're talking about you must not know about boxing Canelo's going to win and right now I'm trying to get my family to give me another 10 grand so we could do 20 grand because this is a for sure thing. We're going to get rich. Some relationships you think are a for sure thing and they're not. But God is a for sure thing and love is a for sure thing. And what God is saying, apply love to it and I guarantee you it will grow. We must trust God and use the spirit that he's given you. The Holy Spirit fills your heart with love because love always works. It's absolute, it's definite, it's for sure. His barber woke up Sunday morning, really depressed, 10 grand short at least. Imagine how many haircuts you have to do to save up $10,000? Some of us in this room, you're really disappointed because you put your faith in the wrong thing or the wrong method. And God is saying love is guaranteed to cause growth. And growth is this. Let me see if you want this in your life. Increase in size and stage of development. Love causes increase in size 
and, st and stage of development. What it's talking about increase in numbers and also increase in maturity. Well, increase in numbers, why would you want to increase in numbers? If you have a business, you want to increase in numbers. If you have a ministry, you want to increase in numbers. You want to become more effective. And God is saying, if you want to become more effective and you want to have greater influence, make sure you're creating an atmosphere that causes growth and love is that atmosphere. It also means something that has grown or developed by a process. Maturity, love causes maturity, expansion, enlargement. Love is the atmosphere for guaranteed growth, just like good soil is the prime condition for seed to germinate. Our goal as a church is for everyone to absolutely feel loved after every interaction with us. The question we must ask ourselves consistently did we love them to the best of our ability? We must keep in mind that God uses his love in us to build loving relationships, which he uses those relationships as a bridge for others to enter into a loving relationship with Christ. I just said a lot. That means before they know Christ, they have to know Christ in you. Your love for them is a reflection of God's love for them. If they do not see our love for them right where they're at, if you don't change, I love you because God loves you. How we love one another is a reflection of God in us. And God uses our loving relationships as a bridge to Jesus. This is what I've learned. If they don't like you, they won't receive the Jesus that you're offering. And that's why God has filled you with his spirit so you can be build a bridge of loving relationship with them, a bridge to Jesus. That's so great. We're living in a world with so much anger, division, and heartbreak. I seen something yesterday that just blew my mind, hurt me, devastated my thought about the situation, that there was a mother on Mother's Day that killed her three children. And they don't, they're not releasing how she, she just moved in there real nice. As a matter of fact, she was in the nicest house in the neighborhood. They just moved there, I think, from Kansas City. Beautiful young lady with three children, and she used her 16-year-old as an accomplice to kill the three kids from 8 to 13 years old or 8 to 12 or something like that. What would drive someone to do something so devastating? Is that this woman somehow had a breakdown. She was hurting inside. Love could have healed her. But someone hurt her so bad that she started losing her mind. And maybe she started using drugs to cause, be her medication. But it didn't solve it. It was making her more crazy. We are living in a world with so much anger, so much division, so much depression. Many of the people that we have contact with on a daily basis have not experienced a touch of love for years. If we would make love our highest goal in our churches, in our lives, in our organizations, we would really stand out as a place that people could, would want to interact with on a frequent basis every person on earth has an innate desire to love and be loved love is the greatest need on earth and the good news is our churches our organizations can meet that need we can meet that need how many believe we can meet that need 
I'm laying a foundation here to let you know what people want is love. The little girl in the neighborhood that her father, she don't even know who her father is, just wants love. The young man that's in the neighborhood that's entertained and become a part of a gang, he just wants love. The little girl, teenage girl that's being pimped out by some, some pimp on, in the hood, taking advantage of her because she has no father and her mother is on drugs. All she's looking for is love and acceptance. And it's crazy what we'll do to experience a little love. But the reality is, the reality is the love that this world gives is manipulated love. But there's a love that can make you whole. There's a love that we can make people complete. And it's the love of Jesus Christ. People are looking for love in all the wrong places. We're the source of love. People have an innate desire to be loved. And love. But love. What does the Bible say about love? What priority does God put on love? Number one, love must be our highest goal. Say it with me, love must be our highest goal. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says, let, let love be your highest goal. At the beginning of the year and you set goals, have you ever said this? Maybe you have, or maybe you haven't. The number one goal is that I'll become more loving, more kind, more patient. God is saying love needs to be the highest goal, higher than our financial goals, higher than our health goals. I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to make sure that no more sugar. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with setting that goal. No more carbs, no more carbs, just proteins. I'm going to lose my belly fat. I'm going to start exercising four days a week. I'm joining a gym. That's great. I love that. But be careful that you're not more physically fit than you are spiritually fit. It's okay to make goals, but your highest goal should not be ministry goals, business goals, relationship goals, or educational goals. Your highest goal should be love. And now this word love is, is a Greek word, agape. Say it with me, agape. And this word is a verb. And the word love means benevolence or acts of kindness, generosity, a genuine, a genuine concern for the welfare of others and advent, advancement of others, usually manifested by donations of money, property, or service to the needy person. A desire to help those in need with the necessary action to meet that need. You can't say you love someone and not do nothing about it. If we love sinners, we'll do everything we can to let them know that God loves them. We'll do everything we can to reach them. Even if it means it's sacrificial on our part. If someone's hungry, we just don't say, hey, bro, we'll pray for you. We as a church make sure we have a food bank, a food warehouse that's packed with food so we can make sure we give them groceries. Love comes with action. When we started this church, God defined what this church would be. It would be a church where people would be loved. I remember God calling me and Lisa to pastor a church. I don't know how to pastor a church because I never pastored a church. I've never even been part of a church plant. I didn't go to college on how to Christian theology school to learn how to start a church. I didn't have the pedigree to start a church. And I remember the night that God began to call me. It, and God called me through a supernatural dream. And he said, Marco, in the dream. And these were the words. Go, they're sheep, and you're their shepherd. And if you don't go, they won't have a shepherd. 
And when I heard that, he was saying, I've assigned people for you to love, for you to take care of, and they're assigned to you. And if you don't go, they won't be loved and they won't be taken care of. There's people that are assigned to you for you to love. I know they get on your nerves, but don't let them conquer your love because God is saying, I sent my son as an example and you spit on him. You pulled out his beard. You crucified him. And this is what he said while he's being crucified. Forgive them for they know not what they do. What Jesus was saying, the love that I have for you is unconquerable. You can't offend me out of loving you. I love you. And there's some people that are offensive and God is saying those people have a sign for you to love show them the love do you believe that there's some hard headed people in your family the people that are hardest to get along with are not the strangers the people that are hardest to get along with are the ones closest to you Many of us have beef with our brothers, our sisters, our church members, our co-workers, our mommies, our daddies, our neighbors. We're struggling with the people closest to us and we're just praying that they would change. You're getting offended with them. You're cussing them out and you're a Christian. They're getting on your nerves. You're gossiping about them. And God is saying, don't act like them because you'll never reach them. What I want you to do is show my love. We want to get them to the point where they say, if it was me, I would have slapped you. If it was me, I would have punched you. I don't know how you put up with me. And then you could finally tell them, you know why I put up with you? And I made an allowance for your faults because I was a sinner and Jesus put up with me and then he filled me with his love and I just wanted to show you that there's a love that's greater than your offensive behavior, your betrayal, your lies and stealing from me. I want to prove to you that God exists and he exists in me and God's just loving you through me Could it be that you're missing the whole point? Well, the point of the matter is, stop it. The point of the matter is, is that you love them. Love is the highest goal. Right? Love, it means a desire to help those in need with the necessary action to meet the need. So when we started this church, God gave the dream. Go, they're sheep and you're their shepherd. I didn't know how to start a church. I woke up that morning and I told Lisa, I believe we're supposed to start a church. And Lisa says, what? What do you mean? I, I'm just telling you what, I had a dream. I was like Martin Luther, I, King, I had a dream. The next night, God gave me a dream just to confirm it. I'm not a dreamer, so you know. I dream about silly stuff, not real stuff. <laughs> so I'm not one of those prophetic dreamers, like always dreaming. Like my daughter's a prophetic dreamer. Her dreams, Allegra, the worship leader here, her dreams are like a movie. And I told, I told Allegra, you got to write down these dreams because they're crazy. They're like, they're literally uh, they're literally a movie, like the detail in them. And I'm like, whoa, I wish I was that in tune. I'm not. It took, it took God over 36 years to get me this dream. That's when I got the dream at 36 years old. And the next night I had a dream and this was a dream. God took me to this forest area and he put me in the middle of huge trees Huge, massive trees. They were like redwoods. And I was in the middle of these trees. This was the, the next night after the first dream. I saw those trees just fall one after the other. And thunderous, a thunderous sound. Boom. Boom. 
They're all falling all around me. And I saw these big, huge root systems. And I said, Lord, what is it? And he said, these are my ministers that have been hurt in ministry. And if you don't start the church, they'll never be planted again and bear fruit. Go and start a church. There's someone here that you've been hurt and you've been struggling. And God says, what I started in your life, I'm going to complete. It's not over for you. We're going to love you back to health. And this is going to be a safe environment where you're going to experience the love of God. Religion hurts you. Leaders failed you. But love is going to restore you. And that's not the love of man. It's the love of God that will complete you and heal you and make you whole, replant you. You're going to bear fruit. In this time, I'm saying, God, what do I do? He goes, don't worry about what you're going to do. Just say yes. But I knew it was a love call. And right around that time, I had a job transfer. I was working in Marino Valley, and there was an opportunity here in San Bernardino. The company I was working with just bought a store in San Bernardino. And they asked me, Marco, do you want to go to San Bernardino to turn this store around? We just bought it. I go, I'll go. And I told Lisa... It was like the first week at that job. I go, Lisa, why don't you meet me after work? I want to drive around this city and see if this is where we're supposed to start a church. God's saying, we need to start a church. But I knew what I was looking for. I was not looking for good neighborhoods. I was looking for hurting people. And as we were driving through the, through the streets, I saw people zombified because of the drugs they were taking. I saw homeless people all over the city. I saw graffiti. I saw pain. I saw hurt. And we parked in a neighborhood. And I said, Lisa, what do you think? She goes, I think this is a place. I go, I do too. This is a place that we could love people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know that hurting and broken people recognize something that they need help stop putting people down that are struggling and love them come on they're struggling but you've been str come on. you struggle in the past just because they're a meth and just because they're homeless and just because they're strung out doesn't mean that God is not trying to reach them there was a time that you were in a pit you were hopeless you were in the darkest place but God reached through somebody and he says come on baby I know your family left you come on your come on everybody lets you down you were abused but baby it's not over. I'm on a love search for you. I found you. It's time for you to get restored. It's fine. time for you to experience my love. It's time for you to be healed. Now, I was thinking, now that we found a location, okay, next question I ask, how do you start a church? Do you look for a building? Do you get a flyer? Do you try to set up a nonprofit? How do you do this stuff? And God answered me really clearly. And he said this, go and love the people. Love the people. And when he told me that, I wasn't sure what that meant. I was thinking, what, I'm just going to have a hugging campaign? <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you, sis. And just go throughout the city, love, love, love. I didn't know what he meant by that. But this is what he told me. Love is benevolence. Love is action. And what I want you to do is find their greatest need. Find out what their greatest need and just meet it. Before someone might receive your message, they need to get the message that you love them. Too many Christians have the right message, 
but it's wrapped up in the wrong spirit. It's okay to tell the truth, but just because you're telling the truth doesn't mean you're effective. Well, it's the truth. It doesn't matter. It's the truth. Are you saying the truth in love? Speaking, loving, meeting needs must be done in the right spirit. It's okay to correct your kids, but correct them in love. You just don't go tell people they're going to hell. That's your first message. You're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. Why, why are you saying this? Because I love you. That's why I need to know you're going to hell. I did my part on you. If you go to hell, it's all your fault. Go to hell. If you want to, go. I did my part. Your blood is not going to be on my shoulders, buddy. Just so you know, I'm a messenger. I'm a prophet. You're telling the truth, but you're telling the truth under a demonic influence. You know why you tell the truth like that? Because it's a shortcut for your, a shortcut instead of you developing. There's a time in your life that you can't say nothing because you're not even in the right spirit yet. You got to deal with the log in your eye before you start trying to take the speck out of their eye because the log is so big, you're just hitting people all bam, bam, bam. Well, I told my wife and she's like, you told your wife and you told her you come to church too, right? And she don't come to church, but I told her. She's getting the wrong message. She's thinking, is that what you're learning at church? Hmm. Well, let's, let's keep going here. What, what priority does God put on love? Love must be the highest goal. Number two, everything we do should be done in love. In 1 Corinthians 16, 14, it says, let everything you do be done in love, motivated and inspired by God's love for us. Our motivation should be love. You should not be trying to do ministry for a position. You know, right? You should not be creating a worship album to blow up. You should not go and, and start a new YouTube channel so you could be famous and make a lot of money. That's the ambition of the world. That's not the ambition or the inspiration of God. And that's not that God won't blow you up, but as a Christian, he'll make you famous to make him famous. He's not going to make you famous so you make yourself famous and forget about God. God is saying, make sure that everything you do is motivated by one thing, love. And you know what that means? You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. I just, I wanted to use that. That's from the 80s. You guys don't know about that. You know what that means is check your motivation before you do anything. Work with love. Do marriage with love. Raise children with love. Mow the lawn with love. Wash the dishes with love. Do the laundry with love. Go out to dinner with love. Don't be impatient with the waitress. That's not loving. But she's just a nasty waitress. That's your opportunity to love her and bless her. Give her a tip anyways. And let her know, I love you. And whatever you're going through, if you want prayer, I'm here to pray with you. I just want to let you know, I'm from the Way Royal Outreach. And we have an assignment to love everyone we come into contact with. I even eat with love. Come on. God is saying everything you do, conversations with love, correction with love, business with love. Everything you do. Am I doing this with love? With the love of Christ? Okay. So now we're starting a church and I'm thinking, how do we love people? 
And he said this, go find needs and meet them. And I'm thinking, well, how do we do that? He goes, go knock on their doors. Make this practical. Do you mean I'm going to go knock on doors? Where? In the hood? He goes, yeah. Do you know that some people can't do ministry because you're trying to be too safe? You must understand this. If God's signing you for ministry, he sends you to the most dangerous places. God doesn't send you to safe places. He sends you to dangerous places. But there's the truth. He's with you. He's protecting you. Why would you go to a dangerous place? You would go to a dangerous place because you love people. Come on. Stop trying to get into perfect neighborhood, the perfect city. God says, that's not where I'm going. I hang around some dangerous sinners. I came to earth and look what they did to me. But there was one message that they got is that I absolutely love them. And no greater love has one man for another than to lay down his life for them. I remember when God called me to San Bernardino, he told me to sell my house in Yucaipa. Like I was in a city that didn't have any crime. And I was in the best neighborhood in Yucaipa. Our house was right on the foothills. We just, it, it was a beautiful neighborhood. You could take walks up in the hills. Butterflies are flowing. In my backyard, there was a big, huge oak trees. There was even a swing on one of them <laughs> that someone put there, maybe a huckleberry fin, but I don't know how it got there, but it was sitting there. There was deers and bears and lions <laughs> and snakes and tarantulas. <laughs> And God says, sell your house and move in to San Bernardino. Put your kids in the school district. You're going to reach a city that you're going to live in. And I'll protect you. Why would you do something like that? There's a reason why a missionary would leave America and go to a third world country. There's a reason why someone that's never been in a hood would go to a hood and tell them about Jesus. There's a reason why someone in this church would go visit a homeless person that hasn't eaten. There's someone, come on, there's, there's a reason. And the reason that you're going is because your love for them is greater than the fear of the danger. Give Give God some praise. Is there anybody that's here to love somebody? We'll finish this story right now. Those, what does God, what priority does God put on love? Love must be the highest goal. Everything we do should be done in love. And number three, our proof that we truly know God is our love for one another. The proof that we were representatives of God, that we weren't just trying to start a nonprofit in a hood to take advantage of the people, was our love for them. We'd have a building, but we were an assignment to reach some people that God loved but they didn't know. We started knocking on doors. We overcame our fears. I had some fears knocking on doors. Some of the fears is just rejection. What if they slammed the door on me? We just go knock on the next door. I know, but I don't, why would I want to put myself in that situation? Because you love them. And, and, and just turn the other cheek. Keep going. What keeps you going? To the next door because you love them. But pastor, this is one of my fears. In the hood, they got like pit bulls on crack. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm serious. Because they eat the crack in the hood and then they just go buck crazy. They're not like regular pit bulls. They're pit bulls on crack. They're seeing stuff. They look at you and they see a deer. Ah, I got to eat some. So part of it, I was scared of the dogs. I said, Pastor, why were you scared of dogs? Because me and my mom one day went door to door for the first time in our lives. And we, I was probably around 15 years old. And we're knocking on doors just like God told us to knock on doors, me and my mom. And back in those days, back in the day day, like in the 80s and stuff, one of the things that used to be real scary was sharks because of Jaws and then Doberman Pinchers. They used to have movies on Doberman Pinchers, like Attack Doberman Pinchers. Remember those movies? Come on. How many remember back in the 70s and 80s? Like, and they're like, oh, Doberman Pinchers. They're, the, oh, they're like sharks on, uh, on, on land. And lo and behold, we knock on a door and there's a Doberman Pinscher there. I remember my dad, we, my next door neighbor had the Doberman Pinscher. And that Doberman Pinscher's name was Caesar. And that was the biggest Doberman Pinscher this side of Wisconsin. Like he was like, rah, rah, rah. And the problem is he would escape. And he was aggressive and he'd be in our neighbor. What I did was I found a way to make friends with him. And I was the only one that had friendship with Caesar. He was attacking everybody. But I was figuring this, he's going to eat me or we'll make friends with him. I made friends with him. But Caesar would go all through town. And I remember Caesar ended up showing up at our church in Fontana. My dad, he's sitting here. And that dog was at church. When you're getting out of the car, all of a sudden, rah, rah. My dad jumped on someone's car. <laughs> and he said, what kind of church is this? I go, it's not the church, it's the dog. They, they didn't have this church. But we were, we were going door to door. And in and, and the yard, it was like a six-foot sense. It was a, a Doberman pitcher. And that dog was like jumping. Roof! And his head was like, Roof! and I'm like, we're knocking on the door, but I'm looking at this dog. I go, I go ma, this dog looks like it's, like it's getting, like it's, it's getting higher every time he jumps. I go, knock on this door really quick. We got to get out of here. This is a Doberman Pinscher. This is a shark on land. I go, why are we doing this? Because we love people. I go, okay, but let's just do this a little faster. Let's love a little more faster. Come on, more rapido. <laughs> and that dog, roof, and now he's chest high. I go, Ma, this dog is really jumping. The next jump, rawr, he jumps right over the fence. You know what happened to me? I got super, I was like Superman. The adrenaline kicked in. He jumped over the fence. I jumped over his fence. I was in the backyard. My mom was with the dog. I go, Ma, you better, you better run. I, I don't know what to tell you. I can't protect you out there. Why would you do all that? Because we love people. <laughs> so that's why I had fear of the pit bulls in the hood. But why would I go anyways? Because I love people. I'll get bit for Jesus. Let's read this last scripture. In 1 John 4, 8. So, Pastor, what happened? I got bit just knocking on doors, man. Here's my scar to prove it. I'm an OG Christian. 1 John 4 8 says, The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. The proof that you're a believer is not your mouth. Because the scripture says, many will say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. He's going to say, nah, I never knew you. you we, me and you were never acquainted. We 
see you name dropped, but you were never converted. How can you be possessed by the Holy Spirit and not be more like Christ? Just like how can you be possessed by a demon and not be demonic? Look what it says. The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Does not and never did know him. For God is love. The proof that you know Christ, the proof that you are saved is your love for people. That's it. And your love for God. That's the miracle that we used to fight. We, we could care less about everybody, including our family. It was all about my pleasure. It was all about me, me, myself, and I. It's about me. But and then you called on Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And then he filled you with his spirit that filled your heart with love. And now you're saying, I should be angry at this, but there's something don't let me run the way I used to run and do what I used to do and say what I used to say. Something is taking over. I'm responding a different way. And even when I mess up, I'm convicted about it. I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. I don't want to act that way anymore. Before you didn't care. Before you used to hold on to a grudge. What happened? The Holy Spirit has come into your life. You are now a new creation in Christ and the fruit of the spirit that God is producing is love. Not become acquainted with God does not, does not and never did know him for God is love. He is the originator of love and it is an enduring attribute of his nature. And it's an enduring attribute of a believer. We have a great message, but let's make sure our lifestyle and our love matches up with our message. Don't let the enemy conquer your love. Love your brothers and sisters. Love your family members. But hey, man, they're hard to love. I know you're hard to love too. God loved you while you were yet a sinner. You're going buck wild, going crazy. And God says, I love you. And the proof that God loves you is that he sent his only son to die for you. And the proof that God's love is in us, that we'll go to places, touch people's lives right where they're at, not to judge them, but to give them some good news. What you're looking for, you're not going to find here or there, but there's a God that loves you and he's ready to forgive you. And all he wants is a relationship with you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to make you complete. He wants to give you eternal life. He loves you. We're not offering you religion because religion doesn't come with love. It comes with rules. But God wants to let you know he loves you and he wants to use you to love some people. And I pray that we continue being a loving church and the proof that you really love someone is not when they're behaving good. The proof that you really love someone is when they're hate behaving really bad and you're still loving them. Is there anybody want to love like that? Let's all stand up. God is a good God. How many learned something today about love? Live just a little bit. I, I really want to do a series on love because love is so powerful. There's some promises that come with love that are amazing. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Please give me an opportunity to love people into the kingdom of heaven. God is love. And the only thing that will make you complete and make you full and make you satisfied is a relationship with him. Without Jesus, our hearts are empty. That means there's something missing. And we try to figure out what's that thing missing. And we're thinking, well, it's her. She's missing. And you're thinking if she came back, she'll make me complete. 
And God said, she can't make you complete. I can make you complete. If he came back, I'd be complete. I said, no, they, they'll never make you complete. I'll make you complete. You're searching. What do you think that you could accomplish on this earth that would make you fulfilled and totally complete? Whatever you're thinking of, if it's not a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, you'll keep on searching. One more high won't make you complete. One more drinking spree won't make you complete. More money won't make you complete. Maybe if you change your gender, it'll make you complete. You know, we're living in a world right now like, I don't know, there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I know what's wrong. Well, you're offending me right now. No, relax, I'm trying to help you. I'm like a doctor right now. You could go ahead and change your gender, do whatever you want. You could become bisexual, you could become homosexual, you could become trisexual, you just try all of it. <laughs> but I do know this, you're not going to find completeness there, wholeness there, because it's only the love of God you're looking for, and that love, I'm telling you, that love will forgive you, it'll set you free, and it'll fulfill you. That's all. Today's your day. Receive Jesus as your Savior. So what's that about? God wants to come into your heart. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you purpose. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free from the depression, the anxiety, the fear, the rejection. He'll even heal you of your sickness. He'll heal you and set you free from a cycle that you've been in. Somewhere right now, the reason you haven't received a breakthrough, even as a Christian, you forgot how much God loves you and you're still trying to earn something that God just wants to give you. And the devil's telling you, you're never good enough. You're not doing good enough. And, and all that is messing you up here. It's messing with your faith. You're still depressed. You're still in a cycle because you're trying to prove to God, God, I really love you. God says, no, 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 hold on. I really love you. It's not that you love me. It's that I love you. Why don't you receive my love? I'll make you whole. I'll make you complete. And then you can worship me out of gratitude. Stop trying to earn it. God loves you. He sent his son. We'll end it with this. So that whoever believes in him, in Jesus, his death for your sins, death for your crimes. He loves you. He sent his son to forgive you. You come the way you are. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but they could have everlasting life, a new life, a new beginning. Give your life to Jesus. Give up your sinful life and give your life to Jesus. You know, I was, uh, one last story. I, this week, the, the big story, one of the big stories was there was a prison guard, second in command in the prison, that she fell in love with one of the inmates. Her husband passed away not so long ago. I don't know if she was lonely, but she made a really bad mistake. Years of working for the correctional system. And she falls in love with one of the prisoners that's a murderer. And she sneaks him out. I don't know what she's thinking, but she's thinking, this guy right here is going to make me whole. This guy, there's something missing, but he's going to complete me. And I'll do everything I can to fix my emptiness. She sneaks him out of the prison. They go on a run for 11 days. She found out in those 11 days, he's a criminal. He can't make her better. He's a sinner. I'm more empty than I ever have been. What a great mistake I made. The police finally catch up with her. I think it was yesterday or the day before. They go on a, a police chase. The Cadillac car that they stole ended up in a, in a ditch. The airbags went off. And rather than be arrested, she killed herself. She's going into eternity. And all I'm saying, she thought it was going to make her whole, 
but it led to death. Be careful what you're seeking after because it could lead to your physical death and your eternal death forever and ever. Today's your day. I'm going to just end it with this. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, you want to give your life to Jesus and you want to be saved or you're sitting in this room and saying, I want that love that you're talking about that'll make me complete and whole. If you're saying today, I need a new start. I need a new beginning. I've been depressed. I've been lonely. I've been hurting and maybe even addicted. You come the way you are. You come with your hurt. You come with your pain. But this is a moment of decision. Nothing changes without action. You got to make a decision. I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven. I want eternal life. I need help. I want to be made whole. Today's your day. I'm going to count to three. Or maybe you're a Christian and you back said it's time to come back home. Come back to love. He's not going to judge you. Come back the way you are. Don't try to fix yourself. Today, God brought you here to let you know he loves you. He wants to fill you with his love and use you to love others. Wow, that's powerful. One, I'm going to count to three and say, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to experience that love. I want everlasting life. I want to be forgiven. One, I want to be made complete. Two, I want to be set free. I want to be saved. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three, raise your hands over this building. I see the hand there. I see that. Come on, someone's getting a brand new start. Someone's getting a brand new beginning. Right there, come on. It takes a real man or woman to say, I need a new start. I need a new beginning. Something's missing in my life. Online, stand up right where you're at. Stop your car. Pray with me. Give your life to Jesus. God is right there. Those that raise their hands. I want you to leave your seat and you come with your pain. You come with your heartbreak. Come on, you come with your loneliness. You come with your failures and let God's love restore you. Let God's love heal you. Stop searching. The search stops here. Come forward real quick. Ask your neighbor if you want to go up there. I'll go gladly go up there with you. As they're singing, just come up. It's your moment. yourself come forward come on who's been cutting themselves come on it's pain you're trying to release pain and God wants to heal you of that pain today's your day come on to get set free from cutting God wants to set you free you're one step away from suicide it started with cutting you're self inflicting the pain you're wondering if I could just if I could just release some of this pain come to Jesus come with your addiction come on you don't need one more dose you need Jesus to set you free He's the one that can make you whole. He's the one, come on. He's the one that can give you a new life. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. There's somebody here that you stopped loving a long time ago because they hurt you and you've been angry. And God said, it's time to break the cycle of anger and receive forgiveness and give some forgiveness. Come on, who's there that needs to forgive somebody? pray all right we're praying come on there's somebody it's time to forgive it's time to let it go forgive yourself it's time to let it go all right we're gonna pray they're still coming come on they're still coming we got we got to give an opportunity for people to come to Jesus wait come on this is not in and out burger come on we got to wait we got to wait upon the Lord as he's working on people's lives. Come on, church, never get tired of a call. You know why we're here still? Because we got to pray for those that are up here. There was a time someone needed to pray for you. You pray for them. Okay. Okay, we're going to pray right now. The greatest miracle is God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is God comes in 
and makes you into a new person. You're not joining a religion. You're being converted from a sinner to a child of God. It's not like, I'm going to join this church. It's bigger than that. You're entering and reconciling your relationship with Jesus. And when he comes into your heart, he cleanses you of all your sin. He forgives you. And when he forgives you, he washes it all away. All away. It's gone. Your record is totally clean. He'll never bring it up again. It's forgiven. Your credit is clean. God wants to do something in your life today. Give your life to Jesus. If you need a miracle to be set free from a drug, drinking, depression, anxiety, we're going to pray right now for the Spirit of God to set you free right now. Make you in a new person, but you're making a decision today to place your faith in Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on Jesus to save you, to make you whole, to make you a new person. And then you're making a decision to follow Jesus. Come to church. Study the word. We're going to help you with that. First step, get baptized after this. There's a next step. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe and I know that I'm a sinner. I've done life my way. I've been seeking for wholeness, happiness, peace, purpose in all the wrong places. I've been hurt, betrayed. I ask you, Lord, to heal me and set me free from every bad habit, from every addiction. Heal my broken heart. Set me free from depression, from anxiety. Make me new from this day forward. I repent of all my sins and I call on you, Jesus. Save me from this day forward. I make a choice to follow you, Jesus, for the rest of my life. Fill me now with your spirit, with your love, with your joy. I thank you, Jesus. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am saved. I'm born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Your next step is to get baptized, join our Holy Warriors class, and show up to church this Sunday. Now as a believer, you come to church. God bless you, church. Remember, this is God for you. There's no one that could be against you. Go out there and love some people. Thank you, worship team. Let's go ahead and just sing a song as we release the